Kidder. How's everybody doing out there? Back again with my comic review. As always, hope everybody had a good time collecting as much as I do for this week. Um, this is technically the last books that came out for the last uh, for February. Um, as always, and first again, like to bring back my shout outs again and this time around I'm giving the shout out to my friend Tanaka Khan 1985 uh, very cool guy talk to him here on YouTube as well on Skype uh, he does a lot of extraordinary things as well he does comic reviews he has his enlightened take on things as well as various TV shows and things like that his mindset and I've always and he's just so hilarious to just talk to uh it's it's not even funny <laughs> um so yeah that's the shout out for today if you haven't been to his channel subscribe to him very cool guy uh, i will leave his link of his channel in the description as well so gotta give shout out to him that's the today's shout out this week as always you gotta love show some love and respect to uh sensei blue goblin uh my mentor and always, guys, catch him wherever you can. Subscribe to him. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be doing comic reviews as it is. So that's enough about that. Uh, went on a minute with uh, <laughs> shout-outs. Uh, got some interesting books here. have two from DC. Yes, only two. Uh, a few from one independent company and the rest of Marvel. So we're going to kick it off with... DC, being that they they only have two, and um, basically, uh, Batman Begin, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Batman Beyond Unlimited number one. Uh, these are all new adventures that feature stories of Terry McGinnis Batman and the Justice League of the future. Uh, the Batman uh, Begins story is told by is written by uh, Adam Beecham, who's still writing Terry McGinnis really well. Um, the story goes that it seems that Gotham, Neo Gotham City, as they like to call it, is there are Jokers coming in the gang. Remember the gang, the Jokers. There are other gangs, versions of the Jokers coming in from all over other cities from Coast City, Star City, you name it. And they seem to all be flourishing to Gotham City. And Terry has his hands full. He's trying to, and Bruce, they're trying to figure out why the hell are all these other uh, Joker gangs coming there. Uh, there's also a bit of what's going on with uh, Dana, because Dana and Terry broke up again. And we get to see Dana has a brother. So there's also some tidbit in there, but we also see the real mastermind behind this whole Joker flourish gang coming in, and I'm not going to spoil that for you. Um, the, the Justice League story is written by uh, Dustin uh, Nugin, and um, Nugin, uh, Nugin, yeah, Nugin, um, he writes the Justice League story, which also has Terry in there. He is a part of the Justice League, and they're dealing with the first, the first story they're dealing with in the beginning, they're dealing with the outpack of, remember the episode with the Splicers and uh, Cuvier? Well, his his uh, legion have formed a group called the Animal uh, Society, I believe, and they're having a war with the Jokers uh, in Gotham. But that was only there. And then the real story goes with what happens with... Uh, Superman needs the team to in, in, to investigate Cobra because they had an operative go in undercover, and that was Micron, the 
I guess the uh, future version of the atom. Uh, so they need to know what's going on. They think he may be a traitor. Uh, but yeah, not bad for the first issue. Not bad at all. Um, glad they brought back Batman Beyond. Uh, it's always good to see them bring back. I am a fan of this. I was a fan of the series, and I'm a fan of the comics. Batman Beyond be unlimited. Number one. Okay, moving on. Uh, Justice League number six. All right. Uh, this is the conclusion to Jim Lee. Uh, Jeff Johns and Lee's first story arc, the beginning of the beginning, the origin of how the League came together in this new 52 universe. Overall, I really enjoyed what I saw. But, however, I definitely have to agree on with what my mentor, Blue Goblin, said about, you know, Darkseid, you know, them taking down Darkseid, things like that, you know. It kind of felt a little rushed, you know, a little bit like, oh, like, that's it, you know. Um... There was some key points in the factor of this book as well. For example, why Darkseid came to Earth and things like that, you know. It was some equivalent to something with Superman. Like, it was a lot of things. Cause Wonder Woman even asked Darkseid, why are you here? And she's, he says, for her. And I'm like, okay, who's her? Who are you talking about? Um, I did like, there were some also matter of speaking. Once again, got to agree with Gabi about, you know, Batman at a, 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 a conference standing with them. I'm like, okay, that's not Batman, you know, and things like that. For a team that really is not like co -co cohesive and being friends, because Hal's still coming off like a, a bit of a jerk in this, in terms of, you know, they're, I have my own things to do. They all saying that, you know, I can't be here, we can't do this. But I think Flash, call it what they call it, with, uh, Flash. Given the name of them, the, the it was actually funny. The Super Seven that that was funny, um, but overall it was good. I did enjoy that. Now I want to see where they're going to go with present day stories, and knowing what some of the other members of the Justice League, that future members that are coming, I'm interested in seeing what's coming next. Uh, also, the backstory of the woman in pink, who she is, and who uh was really good um, for all those. I don't want to spoil too much of that, but we know that the Council of Celestials, there are these, there's like a being, these spectral beings that don't want her here. They feel that she, she's done wrong by interfering, you know, changing the course of time, everything like that. I will give you her name. Her name is Pandora, the woman in pink, and she's encountered, I'm going to also give who she first encounters, they send down to encounter her. The Phantom Stranger. So it was good to see the Phantom Stranger, and it was good to mention other people like the Spectre and people like that. Uh, so they give like a backstory of also of her in this book. But uh, overall, it was good. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. So as always, that's all of DC. Well, we're gonna move on to Dynamite, and I got four books from Dynamite to cover for you. So we're gonna kick it off. <laughs> We're gonna kick that off um, with um, with oh excuse me <laughs> the Bionic Man number seven. Apologize, guys. Uh, Kevin Smith, Phil Hester. All right. Uh, so last issue. Uh. Uh, Steve basically encountered the, his predecessor, the person that came before him, uh, the first bionic man, so to speak. And in this issue, Steve basically reveals himself to his future, his former fiance that he's alive, he's not dead, you know, things like that. But some things have changed. And at first, you know, she's really upset about it because she she mourned him for years and she she put all herself into his his her work and everything like that trying to stay you know can't just can't believe that he's he's gone but uh he informs her that things have changed you know he's he's been rebuilt in a way so he shows him his bionic uh parts and stuff like that you know 
and but she still loves him. She's still saying like she she loves him and things like that. Um, and she doesn't care. So um, o uh, overall, we do get more of a backstory into Hall, who why where he is, why he's the way he is, everything like that. Since he is the first prototype, usually with first prototypes things go wrong. Uh, being that. Steve, Steve Austin here, basically is the new improved version, and we figure out that we found out what goes on, what happened to Hall. Hall was this, he was a, a true-blooded uh, GI Joe in a way, <laughs> as they call him. He did his job very well, but unfortunately, uh, things happened. He was gunned down, and they pretty much rebuilt him and things like that. You know, the whole nine yard. He rebuilt him. He was at first he was functioning well, but the there are nuclear mercury levels in his bionic systems that were feeding into his brain and that started to cause him to go crazy and mad with power and things like that. So uh the head of the OSI, as you can see here, Miranda uh Carlison basically is telling Steve your first mission is to your official first mission is to eliminate him deactivate him and Steve's like so you basically are sending a machine to kill a machine you know I'm not gonna do it and that that cover right there sums it up pretty much of what basically happens to him at the end basically to make sure that Steve does what he wants what they want, they put a fail safe in him, basically, where they can, she can basically shut him down, shut down his bionic systems, and basically she says, if you don't do what we say, do what I say you to do, basically, we're, I'm, we're gonna let that mercury that we, you know, basically your bionic systems to kill you, basically. So yeah, like she's coming off still like a bitch as always, and it's um. It's been good, though. Not gonna lie. Bionic Man, number seven. Still been good. Moving on to next up, Green Hornet, number 22. The first issue in the next story arc called Outcast. Uh, this was at first, it looks like a very standard issue, once again, of the Hornet. Um, there are some new players trying to intervene into Central City. Uh, we also get to see a little bit of what could be the a new ally for uh, Brit, Brit and uh, um, Mulan. And like I said, it was just a really good standard issue. You know, uh, Brit's doing his thing. He even gets to uh, test out his new um, his new uh, vehicle um, while Mulan is driving around in the black blue black beauty. Excuse me. Uh, the Green Hornet is driving around in the Stinger, this souped up uh, motorcycle, which is really cool. Um, but all in all, we're seeing some new players come into Central City, and this is flourishing what's to come in this new story arc. But other than that, it was very good. It still was very good to me. Uh, very good. Been loving, uh, I've been really loving and enjoying. Dynamite's version of the Green Hornet um, since Kevin Smith started writing it and then going on from there. They've been doing a very good job. Dynamite really has done a really good job with a lot of the cult pulp classic heroes. And speaking of classic heroes, uh, Lord of the Jungle, number two. Uh, this is written by Advit Nelson and dr uh, drawn by... Uh, Roberto Carlos, uh, Castro has a badass cover of Tarzan on there, looking, showing off his glory. Um, this story now picks up now 20 years after the events of the first issue where we saw uh, John uh, Clayton, the Lord, Lord of Greystone, and his wife, and basically what happened to them uh so this the year is now 1908 and we are basically on the coastal bengalo congo of africa so basically 
there are there was a group like a pirate group or uh, that basically killed their captain, stole the treasure, buried it on there, and kidnapped and kept uh, Mr. John Clayton, Professor, uh, the professor, and of course his daughter Jane Porter, uh, basically as hostages. They find a hut basically that says on it, "This is the home of White Skin." the killer of apes, killer of lions, yada 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 everything that you can think of, okay, just being aware of that he's watching you, the, the spirit of the jungle is watching uh, white skin in a way is the name of what the natives call Tarzan so to speak um, Tarzan shows off his skills in this big time in terms of making those pirates look like assholes in a way, look like just seriously, he takes him out. Wait, excuse me. <laughs> takes him out just like that. Um, and it was funny because he takes out this crocodile that was about to kill uh, Clayton. No problem. Like he he just grabs the croc and just breaks his neck like it was nothing. And then he just begins to like eat him. <laughs> it was and and uh, Clayton's like Clayton. And he's like, Tarzan, are you white skin? Tarzan. And he's, he's are you white skin? Tarzan. And it's, it was really funny. That was funny. Um, but yeah, they've still been going pretty much, still giving Mr. Edgar Rice Burroughs' classic character a good, so far. Um, it's still, it's, it's getting dark, but um, it's good. Now, I just can't wait to the next issue to see where they take the Lord of the Jungle. And last but not least for Dynamite. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Voltron. Uh, first and foremost, um, I like to say if he's watching, Ty, thanks for giving me a shout out to um, the, uh, the writer of this book when you went to WonderCon, I believe. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I have been enjoying Voltron, and that is a badass cover by Alex Ross. Basically, uh, this picks up once again. It tells is telling from uh, 21, 21, uh, 24, and 2014, and we now are starting to get a little bit more of a gist of. King Zarkon and everything like that and where he came from and things like that also where also the flourishing of how Voltron was born in this this is very this is very good in my opinion um, and not spoiling too much that's pretty much what this is all about once again how Voltron was born uh, how the, the Voltron force has to get Voltron back they have to travel to the moon. Uh, there are just a lot of good stuff in there that I don't want to spoil for you. But I've really been loving the take of this. And I've just been loving it very much. I can't wait till they start uh, printing Voltron Year One. I'm looking forward to that as well. So that's it for Dynamite. Uh, moving on to Marvel. And I got the rest of Marvel, basically. And we're going to kick it off with the world's greatest superhero. Amazing Spider-Man number uh, 680, Dan Slott, Yosh, and uh, Kamula Kohli um, back on the artist, as the artist. Uh, it's Sp Spider-Man in space, 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 space. <laughs> um, I definitely have to agree once again with Gabi on this. This felt more like a Fantastic Four adventure, not a Spider-Man book. Uh, I felt like I was reading more of Spider, uh, Fantastic Four and Spider-Man just guest starring in it. Um, bottom line, this is John Jameson is stuck on a spaceport and uh, lost communication. And Pete felt you know he has to go do something about it. He has to figure out what's going on. So he turns to his best friend, one of his best friends you know, Human Torch, you know, to help him. 
and they go off to the space station to figure out what's going on and lo and behold we find out there's danger aboard there uh, set by in a way by Norman Osborn this is still kind of the road to the new the next big story arc uh, with uh, the sinister jick and and um, Doc Ock I think I just said Norman Osborn guys I meant Doc Ock um, but other than that it was good it was good for what it was but yes it did it did feel like a Fantastic Four book instead, but I did love the, the the great back and forth banter between Johnny and and Spidey. Classic stuff, guys. Whenever they get together, you know it's going to be classic. But uh, Amazing Spider-Man six eighty. Still looking forward to that next the big story. I can't wait to see what they do with that. Next up. The Avengers, number 23. Alright, now, for all those who are not reading Avengers, New Avengers, the both stories kind of coexide with each other because they're both dealing with Norman, Norman Osborn, who, to me, still, Marvel's still trying to make to be out to be a full-fledged Marvel villain and not just uh, one character villain. Uh, basically, in this issue, we the Avengers are still being held by the combined of Hydra, a AIM, and the Hand. So it's a combined power going at the Avengers. They have Captain America. They they talk to the president, and they're like, "Here's our demands. We want you to basically capture." the Avengers for war crimes against them um, yada, basically Norman Osborn's league basically saying this this was Madam Hydra saying and if you don't if you don't hear our demands you know what's gonna happen basically um, and they have Captain America basically held captive and they're like he's basically Madam Hydra's like look now say something Captain like gloating and everything like that and Captain America's like saying don't make deals with terrorists, Mr. President, things like that. Uh, on behold, lo and behold, we have the newest member of this new team, this new quake, basically breaking the uh, the members out. To, uh, Iron Man, Storm, Red Hulk, Spider-Woman, and Hawkeye. Uh, while Vision was dealing with Norman Osborn. And... Um, Quake, Quake is a badass, and she comes off really badass. She comes out and uses off her seismic powers and is like, look, take me to the Avengers. If you don't, I'm going to shake this place to the ground. Um, it was really funny. I loved when they captured the former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who pretty much gave Norman Osborn all the powers of the superhero community. Tony's like, okay, you're going to tell us what's going on. And she's like, I'm not afraid of you. And uh, Red Hulk is like, give her to me. And he's like, and and Storm's like, what are you going to do with her? You're not going to hurt her, are you? And he's like, no, I'm going to eat her. And he's like, and she's like, okay, okay, the rest of your team is in the basement. She just, she just blats everything out. It was really funny. But also we see that not everything is cop copacetic with what's going on with AIM, this whole affiliation with AIM. Hydra and all that. Madam Hydra has her own plans with the Gorgon, and she she's got a real f affiliation with the Gorgon. She's like really falling for him and stuff, and she's like, you know, we can make our own team and everything like that. Uh, Osborn's gonna fail and everything like that. Um, pretty much a usual thing. There's always a dissension in the ranks between Osborn, but uh, other than that, it was it was good. Um, it was good. Avengers. All right. Um, Future Foundation number fifteen. This is one of the last issue that I'm I'm gonna collect. Uh, issue sixteen, guys, will be my last issue that I review. Um, reason why is because Hickman is doing a good job, nonetheless. But it's losing its luster with me. I'm getting more towards Fantastic Four now, and instead of the book just being about the kids and I'm not and I don't hate the kids I don't hate the kids but it's just that 
you know, I'm leaning more towards the FF more than the Fantastic Four book instead of the FF. Uh, but in this issue, um, first of all, the artists in this, uh, John Dragada, I think that's his name, um, Dragada basically does a better job than Bobillo, who was on there, who made everybody look like <clears throat> Neanderthal, me, uh, slope, slope the foreheads. Um, this issue actually has the, the kids of Power Pack in it. The Power, Power Pack uh, help out the kids in this. Um, it still picks up where, you know, both stories are leading up to and things like that. And it just tells, it's just telling the point of view from the kids' side of it. That's all. Um, especially from, um, uh, from, um, uh, Val Valerie and, and, um, basically, I'm, why am I forgetting his name? Uh, well, the kids of Reed and Sue. I'm, I'm just going to feel like that. I can't remember his name right now. Um, but it was okay. It was okay. But this is the last of 116 comes out and wraps up this story arc. That's it. Um, I'm ending my run on FF. I'll be pulling this off my, my pull list. Um, no disrespect, but it's just... It's, I'm leaning more towards FF. I thought it'd be cool to have two... Fantastic Four books, but I don't know. I'm just not feeling it too much no more. Uh, Moon Knight, number 10. Once again, Bendis decides that it's a good idea to kill off a character that is actually cool. It's just that Marvel hasn't been using her. Yeah. Echo is dead. She was killed by... Count Nefaria, the kingpin of L.A., just shot her right through the heart. Moon Knight basically is still suffering from split personality disorder, and those personalities have become the form of former Avengers teammates, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Captain America. His Wolverine persona dominated and killed the Captain America and Spider-Man persona, and now it's basically him just guiding Mark. Mark is still trying to recover from what happened. He was in custody by the cops. His buddy Buck, who was a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, breaks him out and things like that. And he's still being haunted, you know, by past misdeeds that, you know, he's done. Not just from Echo's death, but from his future lover Marlene things like that and they they're saying like you you cause more trouble than helping things like that we also get to see Count Nefaria's daughter who is Madame Mask Whitney Frost um and it's still it's still all about what they had planned with the Ultron head that this the story has all been revolving around um but still Bendis I don't I hate what you did with Echo. Why'd you kill her? Okay, Echo was a very good character, and I had a lot of respect for a deaf hero, a deaf hero who was badass, and who was pretty much the equivalent to Daredevil in a way. Daredevil was technically blind. Echo was deaf, so she had to look at you to read, re, uh, to understand what you were saying. But just Ben just killing off once again characters that. We haven't seen in a while, and Bendis seems to still be go. He loves doing crazy characters, and he and he's making Moon Knight more crazier than he should be. And it's a shame that this book is ending after issue twelve. They're canceling it once again. Another great character that I truly love, canceled, getting canceled. Okay. Next up, uh, New Avengers number twenty-two. Okay, so once again, like I said, New Avengers and Avengers coincide with each other. In this book, the Luke's team is basically being held by federal agents saying, like, we are ordered to bring you into federal custody for questioning. Luke's like, so you're keeping me out of my own home, you know, things like that. My wife and child are in there, you know, and... 
I gotta agree. I gotta give Norman Osborn a lot of credit. He set Luke's team up pretty well. He set them up. He set them up almost like a checkmate. He set them up to look, make them look bad on TV while they were battling his new version of the Dark Avengers. And not getting round in the custody by the federal agents, Doctor Strange uses a, a teleport. Tele, a teleportation spell and transports the team to the Sanctum Subtorium, basically. But he, he even says that we can't stay here for long. The They'll probably come here next. And Wong gives Luke a note from Jessica Jones that saying that she left. She left the, the mansion right before anything. She took the baby. She took baby Danielle. Her and Squirrel Girl left. So Luke is like, I got to go find my wife. I got to find what's going on. While the other team goes looking for Victor, Victoria Hand, because they think it was her who well, set, right they set them up. Yeah. It was basically, so they figure out what's going, they go to interrogate Victoria Hand. They think she betrayed them. She's like a double agent working for Norman Osborn. And so to speak, she kind of is, but not. It's kind of hard to explain. But uh, we also find out that it might, it looks like Scar is not exactly part of this Dark Avengers team, actually. And that's all I'm going to leave it on. But um, yeah, New Avengers number 22. All right. Um, next up. Ultimate Comics, The Ultimates, number seven. That is a, I love that cover of Ultimate uh, Falcon. It looks very cool. Okay, um, once again, coexisting, Ultimates and Ultimate X Men kind of coexist in what's going on now in this this new universe, the universe now. Basically, there are cities, two cities, that are led by two brothers, and then you got Reed Richard, his city called the city. <laughs> uh, uh, Reed has pretty much become evil, basically, in a way. And this is all about what the ultimate Nick Fury and everything are plans to do about it. Uh, since Captain America is still not coming back on the team, you got Falcon, Nick Fury, Widow and Hawkeye coming to the good city to ask them for help and what's what to do about it trying to help to ally themselves against Reed Richards city and that keeps sounding so funny saying that but that's all this was um, not a lot of action more on the dialogue side um, but all in all not bad um, it's still good to see uh, Sam Wilson the ultimate uh, version of Falcon um, like I said, that cover is badass. I like that cover. Very cool. Bless you. Um, Ultimates. As in Ultimate X-Men, Ultimate Comics X-Men number 8, Nick Spencer takes us on what's going on with Karen Grant, a.k.a. Jean Grey, and her affiliation with S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury and all that. And it's all about, is she... A double agent, or is she playing Nick Fury because Nick Fury thinks she's he's she's here, or is she playing the the Tan um, Zorn, the, one of the individuals that I was talking about in the Ultimate Ultimates? Um, that's pretty much all this is. Uh, but we see her really lead pretty good. She the Ultimate X team that's supposed to be Shield's mutant team. Um, is Karen Grant, she calls herself now, that's Jean. We have Liz Allen, who is the fire star of this universe, and a guy called Derek, uh, I forgot the name, his last name, but he's a, he's he's pretty much like Angel. He's like a Griffin-like character. Um, and that's pretty much what all this was about. Look, once again, both two issues, both a little bit more on the dialogue side, instead of, you know, um, a mixture of action 
some action, but more on the dialogue side. Um, next issue, I really want to see what's going on with the other uh, members, like, for example, Colossus and Storm, because they're in, like, a concentration camp uh, that Valerie Cooper has kept them in, and I, I really want to see what's going on with them. But if I was to say which Ultimate book that I'm enjoying the most out of the three, I would have to say Ultimate Spider-Man. That has been really good. That's my favorite out of all of them. And last but not least, uh, Venom, number 313.4, Circle of Four, Part 5. Uh, Rick Miranda is back on this issue. Um, I, overall, from reading the first couple of parts, first four or five parts of uh, Circle of Four, I'm here. I'm in between. I'm not all for it, and I'm not against it. It first of all, it's very inter It was it's very cool to bring back Blackheart, okay, and it's good to see Black part, Blackheart, excuse me. But it and it's really good to see characters that you know have you know are shining outside of some of the big name heroes, you know Venom, Red Hulk, X twenty three, and the Ghost Rider. Uh, it seems that Blackheart's plans are pretty much coming to fruition a little bit more because he even gets to his brother, uh, uh, Damien Hellstrom, you know, who is the son of Satan himself. And, you know, Doctor Strange can't really... They're kind of... Doctor Strange and Damien Hellstrom have been holding back hell outside of... from the other, out, other, other world, just in Vegas, pretty much, because it was Vegas. Um... And the rest of the team ha are back, and they got to stop Black Blackheart, pretty much. That's what it is. Um, and try to get back to Spirit of Vengeance, which is actually cool. Um, the ending of where, who the Spirit kind of chooses is actually kind of... I was like, oh shoot, that's interesting. Um, but overall, this has been fairly good. Not bad, fairly good. But like like my mentor said, keep continue reading Venom. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Rick Miranda really knows what he's doing. It's just that you know, it's it's there. It's right there, guys. Okay. All right. So that's it, guys, for um, this week. Once again, um, stay tuned for. I'll be back next week with another episode of. My comic review, as always. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Tell me what you picked out. Tell me what you liked. As always, you know, don't be shy, as I like to say. I want to hear your comments. You know, I love input. And as always, this is Mumford and Kid saying peace, one love, stay tuned. As always, you guys take care.